everyone, and welcome to another episode of our Wellbeing at Work podcast series. My name is Christy McGuire, and I am the Vice President of Business Solutions for the Americas region. Today, we're going to be discussing a burnout, a topic at the forefront for many organizations. Our employees across the globe report high rates of burnout today. With us today, we have a very special guest, Ahmed Abdel Khalik, Global Corporate Health Advisor with ABB. He has decades of experience as an occupational health advisor and insurance benefits consultant. And in his current role, he leads teams and oversees programs and practices to ensure an exemplary health and safety culture, while also focusing on corporate responsibility. Ahmed, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Christy, for hosting me today. Thank you. So I'd like to start off by discussing how burnout is defined. How can managers identify burnout amongst their teams? Hey, for burnout, really, to have a specific uh, definitive uh, definition for burnout, that's something, I mean, to consider variation from the organization to another organization. But let's not to forget the main topic here is about chronic work-related stress. So burnout usually is about the feeling of energy depletion or exhaustion, whether that's something emotionally or physically or mentally. Usually it's caused by a prolonged and excessive stress that the employee or the person is facing. And usually it's characterized by the feeling of being detached or the cynicism or even the lack of motivation it can usually contain an element of a physical symptoms where uh, a headache or insomnia uh, or a kind of inburned, uh, immune function could exist for that specific person. For a manager to identify that in his team, I believe this is something really connected to how he is monitoring or how he is alerted about the changes happening among his or her subordinates working with her. So usually the first sign that alerts managers are the decreased performance and productivity way. So burned out employees tend to lose the enthusiasm about what they are doing, their energy, which at the end resulted in a lowering of their productivity. It might be not the productivity, but the quality of the work that has been affected. Usually, they are struggling to focus. They make a lot of mistakes. They have difficulty meeting deadlines. So at the end, they show a sort of a decreased performance. Also, managers can look for their absenteeism data. How many sick leaves have been taken by our, or by their employees? Not only the sick leaves, if there, some organization have a depth on the reasons of sick leaves, but also it's about employees who are coming to work in a late manner or maybe, maybe leaving earlier. This is another way to consider what's behind that. On another aspect, the increase of the irritability, most of the burned out employees become more negative and critical while doing their jobs, which might lead to many conflicts, not only with colleagues, but might be with customers or clients. So looking for that from other aspects, as we said in the definition, it's about physical symptoms who are frequently complaining from headaches, stomach aches, or even fatigue. That's other aspects that managers can identify among their employees. Also, they might be taking a withdrawal from the work and social activities within the team or even within the wider area of the company. So usually, burned out employees have a, a, what we call the disengagement from the work uh, feeling the tendency to isolate, uh, do like to be in a lonely situation most of the time, and that's as well coming maybe not from the manager, but as well from the colleagues or the peers who are working with that specific person. Also, managers might notice 
a decrease in dissatisfaction, which sometimes employees are expressing that easily, feeling dissatisfied, I don't like the job, while they used to have this previously, or might commenting negatively on the work environment, even for their overall quality of life. At the end, managers need to be cautious and aware that they need to monitor the changes happening among their employees in an early manner to be able to direct them to the right direction. Well, that's very interesting. And everything you said is is certainly signs that um, organizations need to be on the lookout for. Um, do you have any suggestions around how organizations can dig deeper and really identify if they have a burnout problem, aside from just noticing, you know, what you had mentioned, day-to-day symptoms with certain employees? Well, I believe identification of burnout problem within any organization is something really crucial for uh, addressing and mitigating what kind of problems or the adverse reactions that will happen by burnout for their employees. In addition to what we have just mentioned uh, on how managers could identify the burnout uh, for their teams, uh, as well companies being represented by managers, having a wider umbrella for looking for another indicator, where as well they can consider from an organizational perspective the high turnover rates, where we could see that burnout can lead to an increased number of employees who are leaving the organization because they look for a better work-life balance or might be they are escaping a stressful work environment. Usually, this is something that happens in an organization on a slowly manner. If that's something, will take time for building up a chronic stress. On some situation, they can see a sudden increase in the, in the resignation numbers that happen. And here, that the way to investigate why this is happening is it specific to specific managers because we used to understand that people are leaving managers and work environment. So that something needs to be investigated on an organizational level. Also, if organizations are able to record the conflict and tension cases that have been happening in their workplace, investigating them, understanding what contribute to a negative work atmosphere, which at the end are causes or leading to increased conflict, tension, and increasing the way that people develop burnout. Uh, other aspects where uh, if there is an access to uh, health data, which is supported by uh, medical insurance, where how many cases are introducing or taking a consultation reg- regarding a psychiatric challenge, health issues that's related to stress symptoms, Usually employees, when they have frequent reporting for stress-related symptoms, they increase their health claims and complaints related to that area. Uh, other aspects as well that organization could consider is the lack for the work-life balance, uh, which usually uh, manifested in seeing many employees are working uh, regularly on a long hours or neglecting their personal obligation, and that might be still something that managers could identify, uh, or maybe not taking the right time off, not utilizing their annual vacations. So all of these are a signs of a burnout problem that arise in this organization. At the end, organization needs to check and conduct employee surveys we're asking questions that gives them the understanding of the work environment, uh, maybe adding more uh, focus group meetings to understand how uh, employees are looking or perceiving the workloads. Uh, it might reach as well, reaching for a confidential interviews where employees are allowed to express their personal feelings and confirming that this is not connected to how they will be rated. In addition to that, analyzing the performance 
data, monitoring uh, employees' feedback and annual surveillance that could be conducted. All of these will support organizations to better understand the situation against burnout. What would you say are uh, things that organizations need to uh, to look at that may lead to burnout within the organization? I know you had mentioned a few things just earlier on, but is there anything else you would want to mention? So this is a very excellent question where uh, how we can address, I mean, the issues and as well how we will be managing them because understanding the issue will make it to some extent easier to deal with that kind of situation. We can look for issues among the organization. We can start with something more connected to employees. And at that moment, looking for excessive workloads, because we all know that constantly overloaded employees will at the end have a burnout condition unrealistic expectation from the, from the side of employees about how the company is treating them will lead to burnout. Long working hours, tight deadlines, insufficient resources or support that exist in the organization, all connected to how the employee is perceiving the work within the organization. Also, lack of control and autonomy. Usually employees with a little control over their work, or uh, lacking to the decision-making process, having no power on that area, micromanagement or rigid way of dealing with the policies, uh, maybe limited opportunities for creativity, all of these leads at the end for the feeling of being disempowered and drained of my energy. So developing more toward burnout. We might look for the work environment itself. So poor work-life balance, when the organization makes much more priority to the work over personal life and do not encourage or support employees to have a healthy work-life balance could contribute as well to burnout. Employees usually when they feel unable to disconnect from the work or uh, having inadequate time for self-care that as well increases the risk of burnout in the organization. Understanding those risks will, as I mentioned, will allow how we could develop or understanding how to correct that. Lack of recognition and reward in any organization, inadequate resource and support from uh, uh, the the work environment itself or uh, insufficient staffing level, inadequate training to perform the work, poor organizational culture, we're looking much more to promote high level of stress or showing that this is the ideal model of being excellent in work. Lack of work-life balance, as I say, usually contribute to something like this. Role ambiguity and conflict as well com- support draining uh, uh, employee power. Uh, uncertainty about roles and responsibilities. So all of these factors can interact with each other and reinforcing the others again, all will intensify the risk of burnout. From your experience then, what are effective strategies organizations can implement to manage burnout from within? So for organizations, as just mentioned, identifying the reasons will support them start to identify what are the areas that we can focus on to make better work environment. But basically, fostering a supportive work culture is the basics is in this area. It's about cultivating a work culture where uh, we are valuing our employees' well-being. We are allowing them for open communication. They are expected mutual support. Uh, also, uh, for the supportive culture to have to encourage managers to show the leaders the priorities of a personal life, uh, being a, a model for work-life balance, promoting positive relationship with the team members as other aspect managers could do. Uh, it's not only about fostering the work culture; it's also setting realistic work expectation 
and avoiding loading employees or co- constantly making them overwhelmed uh, about excessive work demands. Encouraging work-life balance within the organization by promoting healthy work-life balance, showing that, as mentioned by managers, uh, supporting or encouraging employees to take their vacation, uh, leading them by example, showing how this would reflect within groups, how this changing their life. Uh, enhancing employees' control and autonomy within the workplace, uh, also providing the right support. Uh, and usually, uh, most of the organization consider that the right support is about a kind of emotional or uh, when the problem is happening, but being much more proactive and not limiting that to the social or emotional support. It's about giving the employee the access to the necessary resources and tools, uh, training, uh, how to perform their job in an effective way, uh, how to offer them the professional development, how to show them the career development, uh, also adding more about the recognition procedures, how to appreciate employee performance, uh, how managers are showing uh, ways for stress management, which a topic that's increasingly now with the resilience building, uh, how to show that we cannot avoid stress, but we can deal with the stress in a better way, developing ourselves. Uh, training the managers how to lead in a stressful condition, how to early identify signs and symptoms of uh, mental issues, uh, also, organization can regularly or required regularly to assess and address the work environment, psychosocial risks that exist in their work organization. Uh, it's a connected systematic process to ensure in a regular manner that we are identifying work-related risk factors and eliminating them as early as possible. You know, we know that employees are reporting increased rates of burnout everywhere around the world. And in some workplaces, there may be preconceived stigma of reaching out for support. And you had just mentioned how important the manager role can be in really impacting each individual employee in their workspace. So in your opinion, how can managers encourage their teams to reach out and get the help that they need before it's too late? So when we look for this, managers really play a crucial role of creating the supportive culture or supportive environment on the work environment. Uh, when really em- employees feel comfort seeking mental support, when they feel that they are appreciated to express what they are feeling. So at the beginning, usually it's about how we are having an open communication within the organization, how managers are creating this way of open mindset for allowing employees to express what they have. This kind of honest communication among the team member will let them feel safe discussing any mental health issue or Managers also, when they allow them to be encouraged for regular checks, providing their own feedback, uh, creating what we call a non-judgmental environment where all employees feel comfort and safe when discussing their issues or their mental health issues, assuming that at the end, the manager will understand how they feel and will direct them to the right direction. Uh, managers to have this kind of open culture and non-judgmental environment, they need to normalize mental health discussion among their team, including such a topic in a regular way on their team discussion, making it easy for them to express what they have. So learning them stress management technique, mindfulness exercise, or bringing the workshops for maintaining work-life balance. This is all something that managers can do with their team, which allow them to have the right environment for discussing. 
Uh, we mentioned that earlier as well, leading by examples. So if the managers want his employees to start I mean, expressing what they need, what they feel, he also needs, he or she he needs to get them that by leading by examples. So prioritizing their own mental health and showing that to their team members, that will allow others as well to do so. Uh, also educating about available resources among the team, like employee assistance program, if it's existing, or any kind of emotional support that exists in the organization, with the all different ways of reaching it, uh, allowing them to save how to contact that specific program will make it much more easier to avoid stigma toward that area. Uh, giving the training on how to deal with different aspects of mental health issues. Uh, when one of your colleagues have a problem, when one of your subordinates have a problem, how to deal in that situation, how to support that affected person, how to support the community or the team about this. Also collaboration with HR uh, colleagues and maybe collaboration with the uh, employee assistance program itself, providing more uh, learning culture for employees on how to deal with a common stressful situation. And at the end, they need to encourage self-care and stress management because with the situation that we are all living with the VOCA environment, we all need to manage the stressful or the stress surrounding us because we will not be able to eliminate. At the end, we are different. We each one of us has a, his own way for the mental health journey and how to judge it is really varying. It's really how to be clever as a manager to support your employees and making the environment available for such a discussion. Your comment about creating an open culture and a learning culture is so incredibly important. Um, when when we talk about burnout, there's often a discussion about who has the responsibility of addressing the cause of burnout. Does it rest on the employee or the organization, in your opinion? So I, I like this kind of, I mean, of question when we are looking for the responsibility, because without knowing who's responsible, we will not be able to find accountable as well. So at the end, both employee and organization are responsible to address any causes for burnout in the workplace. Usually the organization can create a positive work culture, can provide uh, the resources that support employees and stress management or even after having a problem on having a support resource, uh, looking after the employee well-being from all aspects. Uh, uh, organization can as well give much more towards uh, encouraging employees to toward these programs, but at the end, employee, if they are not taking the responsibility of managing their own stress and seeking support once needed, would never have the right culture for themselves, and they might be as well going into burnout, which we all need to avoid. Ahmed, thank you so much for your time today. This has really been a very insightful discussion, and thank you to all of our listeners as well. Thank you, Christy.